Let's begin with preparation for the May 29 inauguration of the administration of the president-elect Bola Tinobu and vice president-elect Kashif Shetima as the presidential inauguration council intensified preparation for the day. It has sent letters to world leaders in line with executive order number 14 of 2023 signed by President Mamadou Buhari on the 7th of February for facilitation and management of tra the transition. The secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who heads the council, said preparation for the event has reached an advanced stage as international and foreign leaders have been invited through their embassies in Nigeria. Julie, it's like 18 days to May 29th and um, we're preparing to host <coughs> the world and a lot of countries with world leaders expected to grace the occasion and that's why the, um, and significantly this is not just um, is a change of return from one administration to another so we expect a lot of world leaders and friends of Nigeria uh, as a country to be around yes um, it is the biggest most symbolic and most important event in our country every four years and um, you want to do your best to invite your friends uh, to be part of this uh, historic occasion. Nigerian presidents have always invited, I've um, always attended similar events. Mm. So they would expect to see their own friends, countries that are charming with Nigeria, even countries that are not so charming, mm. uh, because of the place that Nigeria occupies, um, not just uh, on the African continent, but uh, in, in the global space, you want to <coughs> bet that the inauguration of a new Nigerian president would trend globally and would generally attract the attention of the world uh, with, with world leaders being physically present. Ashwaju Vola Metinobu has um, a good number of friends among world leaders. Uh, not many people know that the FIFA president is Ashwaju Vola Metinobu's very good friend. You know? In fact, you know. Yes, some, someone that he sometimes spends time with, uh, just to go and play with him. You know? And there are world leaders too, that assure you not only made contributions to their imagination. Especially in Africa, yes. Mm. Uh, I assure you is in many ways similar to the late Abiola. No, the late Abiola had friends among African leaders, he even installed some African presidents, and I can say that Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Tinubu has um, also been privileged to install, uh, um, help. I don't want to use the install now because they will take it out of context. Um, has also helped some African leaders to emerge, you know, um, to win their elections, uh, whether it's in Ghana or. Um, Guinea. Guinea, you know, we had uh, a good number of friends among both, both past and present world leaders. So this event, I'm very sure that um, we'll see a good number of his friends. Uh, people have been saying, oh, this election uh, was rubbish by the way I conducted itself and that um, uh, globally is being seen as a non-event. We will know in the fullness of time that day. whether the election was a farce, as some people want us to believe. Uh, we have seen world leaders who have congratulated Nigeria and have shown a desire to even work with the Nigerian government. I remember when we won the president of Ukraine, mm. You know, 
uh, expressed uh, the less his joy at uh, Ashwa Ju's emergence as president of Nigeria. Some people and even extended an invitation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they turned it into um, one big joke on social media. But um, that is what it is. They are, the transition panel is preparing day and night to make the inauguration of Ashwa Jibala and Metsinubu a success. And frankly, I expect to see a lot of world leaders. Our country, every time it seems that our country is on the brink, when you felt that, oh, people will abandon Nigeria, you just see that such doomsday prophecy will not come to pass. Mm. I've seen, we've been through terrible times and our friends have always talked with us. That is a fact, even during the military rule when uh, people are not happy about the kind of dictatorship that was going on in our country, friends of Nigeria stuck with us. So uh, that is what will happen on May 29th, Ashwa Jibola Metinubu will be inaugurated as president and Nigerians look up to him being successful in office because uh, we are already going through a lot. If he fails, we are in trouble as a country. This is, mm. this is a fact. Mm. Upo, now, a lot of um, members of uh, opposition parties, you know, they are afraid, you know, this inauguration day, President Mahmoud Buhari will cease to become the commander in chief and the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and the baton will be passed to Bolatinobu and will become the commander in chief. So, you know, giving him the legitimacy, the power, every power that will be needed as the president of Nigeria, opposition parties are thinking that this my this gesture might tamper with the ongoing court process. That's why they are uncomfortable. Meanwhile, it has always been the norm like that. But I don't know why this particular one is different. You know, sometimes I, I, I don't understand how people think. Uh, one of the opposition candidates, Peter Obi, when he emerged as governor of Anambra State, there was a petition in court against him by Andy Uba. He did not stop his inauguration. So it's always been like that. <laughs> it's not stop his inauguration. Yes. So I don't know why uh, people have to be afraid to so think that the inauguration of uh, the president, of president elect, on May 29th will necessarily impact on uh, the court proceedings. If you have a case, you have a case. If you don't have a case, you don't have a case. We've had incumbents you know, being removed at the state level. We've had senators being removed by the courts just because the petitioners in those cases were able to prove that, yes, these persons were not validly elected. So if you are sure of your case, uh, Yoruba will say, Bogu uh, if you are sure of your case, you don't need to fidget. You, you understand? I don't understand why people will, you know, the time they use in law, say approbate and reprobate. You know, you go to the court, you go to the court because you believe in the judicial system. You cannot believe in the court and still disbelieve in the court at the same time. You cannot have faith in the court and have doubt in the court. It doesn't make any sense. So the truth is the Constitution does not give allowance for a vacuum. Bo uh, President Buhari must necessarily hand over. You know, we've heard people say he should not hand over or he should not be present, or the CJS should not swear in the, uh, the yeah, yeah, president. Yeah, he should stay away. He should stay away. Whereas, okay, if the CJN stays away, who will swear in the, the, the president? Even the CJN is not, let's say the CJN is not even available. I mean, it's not, it's genuinely not available. Someone will do it. Someone will do it. Don't, don't, but, look, even Tinubu has no choice. He has to be sworn in. No, we don't have any choice. So I think what people should be talking about is, let them face their court case. And why the president-elect is there, while, while he's um, the president, let us wish for him to succeed. It is in the best interest of everybody, including those who feel that their mandate, which they never had anyway, was stolen. Mm -hmm. It is in the best interest of all of us 
for the president to succeed, if the economy is buoyant, it is going to be, it will be buoyant for everybody, whether you supported the president or not. So I don't see any reason why people should have any fear. Go to the court. Those who believe, those who have seen the light that maybe their cases will not fly, have withdrawn their petition. <laughs> At least two political parties have withdrawn their petition. Yes. Out of five. Now you have um, three. So if they want to go ahead with their, with their case, they are free to go ahead. But a president must be sworn in on May 29. Mm. And that is the 18 days from now? No, it's a matter mm -hmm. of... Uh, because you see, I, was, I wanted to direct the impact. same question to you, that will it in any way impact on the ongoing judicial process? It has never impacted on it. It has never impacted on it. A, one um, Christian group um, criticized Baba Onayeko and he reminded him of the fact that it was archdiocese when Obasanjo was sworn in, despite court case against him. He was archdiocese when <laughs> um, the man who said he had no shoes, Jonathan, Jonathan was sworn in. He didn't raise a finger. But when Tinobu was sworn in, despite it, even Buari was sworn in, there were those who contested this election. Yes. Baba Naikon was not recorded to have raised the finger. Hmm. But it got to Tinobu in line with the character of many of the today's clerics. He too is saying, oh, um, the election was a, a terrible. I, I'm trying to remember even the way, you know, the man has excellent English in, in store. So I'm trying to remember how he even described the election and then said that it makes no sense. Oh, how come it's so late in the day that you are realizing that you have even attended inaugurations mm. with cases mm. in court? It's part of litigation, yes. You know, it is, I, every time I remember how, without knowing it, church leaders are heating up the polity. Yeah. And making Nigeria so perilous for people to live in. I'm reminded of the fact that increasingly, increasingly, these people are brushing aside their God-given mandate, mandate yes. mm -hmm. and spiritualizing politics. Exactly. It has to stop. Hmm. Some of us are, are extremely embarrassed. Yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, one of our friends, a deputy governor, mm -hmm. you know him very well, he sent me a message, today, let's leave these pastors alone. It's not a difficult thing for me to leave them alone. But they've got to respect themselves. Stay clear. They've got to respect themselves because they are embarrassing me. Preach salvation. I serve God. I serve God the best way that I can. I spend my resources on things of God. Things of God. That, that is a fact. Go to my church and ask. I'm the patron of my church choir. I write songs for the choir consistently since 2006. They are Christians. But those who made it a point of duty to spiritualize politics, mm. they, have, they are embarrassing the rest of us. So when we talk about their excesses, because they are human, they, are, they don't have two heads, they are not bigger than the rest of us. Touch not they just head. happen to be privileged to stand in front of big congregations. Doesn't make them perfect. They've got to change their ways. And if someone like uh, the, the popular cleric in Enugu, Adoration, the man from, from Adoration, Mbaka. can say, look, you desecrated this sacrament by bringing matters political to your pulpit. He was right. I told his line. So even fellow pastor <laughs> realizes that mm. some of his colleagues 
really, really overreach themselves. They punched above their weight category. They did what was wrong. And today, when people are apprehensive about this May 29, pastors are big contributors to the, the apprehension because they were the ones mm. telling us all kinds of things will happen mm. on May 29 mm. or before May 29 mm. or after May 29. Mm. Or during Come the on. events. Come on. I've but never seen a thing like this it's, it's in, very, my, in, in my life. It's very shameful. I mean, let's, very what shameful. is the gain? What really is the gain? And Face that, your calling. That's not biblical Christianity. I the mean, Bible says that all civil powers are ordained by God, that we are supposed to obey civil authority. In fact, the Bible says that civil authorities are ministers of God. Now, it was written in Romans at the time that the Roman Empire was ruling. At that time, there was no democracy. The, the worst rulers were ruling. And yet, Paul the Apostle and Israelite wrote that. Now, constituted authorities must be obeyed and respected. You, as far as, I told some people, I said, Look, even President Boy, you may not like his policies. You understand? You may not like him as a person. But he, he, is, he is ordained by God, is recognized by God. And when Tinubu becomes president, it's the same thing. Yes. Um, as, uh, of, uh, us, uh, until he leaves, he, however he lives. So the truth of the matter is that these things they, they do, they are not representing Christianity. Yet we have some popular pastors who are very moderate, who are very modest. Pastor Adeboye of uh, RCCG, you will not hear him, you, you, he's not partisan. You will not, you will not hear him. Pastor Kumuyi say reckless things. Because they know that they, they, of this, they superintend over mega denominations mm -hmm. with people of different political mm -hmm. leanings. Yes. PDP, everybody. So how do you, how, how would, for example, Adeboye come now and start saying mm -hmm. things, the kind of things, Ibi Yome, Ibi Yome in Port Harcourt will say. Or Enenche. Or uh, Enenche. But these people, they are just I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know, I don't know. My, on, on the, um, 2019, first Sunday, I worshipped at Tenente's church. I brought my family all the way from Lagos to Abuja, Dunamis. Yes. I wanted them to see the church, and we worshipped there, my wife and my, all my kids. Because here was a man after my heart. Hmm. But you stand before a church, and you are, you are talking about your useless party. No, you, Enenche, you went too far. You went too far. When Daddy Freeze went too fast, or too far, you told him. <laughs> In skating language, you told him. And I'm saying you went too far. I may be too small to tell you, but I know that you went too far. Whether you admit it or not, you went too far. There should be limits to this. Exactly. Thing. People that we look forward to, we look up to, we, we, we expect dignified conduct from them at all times, mm. not to do things that put us to shame as Christians. Mm. All right.